Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colwyn Way, and today we're having a bit of fun in the workshop, so we're gonna be making these tiki masks. Now maybe I should be in my Hawaiian smock, but there we are, the gray one's gonna to have to do. This is a little bit of outdoor fun, really. If you have a tiki bar, if you just have a little bar outside, or you're just having a bit of fun in the garden with friends, these are great decorations. So let's get in the workshop and have a look and see how it's done. Okay, so we're just going to start really by cutting um, our timber down. Now this is a log section. I've chosen a bit of birch because it's what I had at the time, but it also it's, it's, it's a nice timber to use because it's not too grainy, if you know what I mean. So this is quite wet as well, so it's going to carve quite nicely. And I've made plenty of these just to go on the outside of the workshop and just to sit outside. Now, and even though they've been there for around about three or four years, they're, they're still holding up and they're pretty good, just with a small cut of oil. So we're just screwing on the clamp so I can put it in the carver's vise. And this is just gonna give me a nice sound platform really to take the outside bark off, just to give us a good canvas to start shaping. And I know I have said Hawaiian shirt um, earlier on, but these are a Polynesian uh, tradition really. So they're given as good luck charms. I mean, in some cases we're not gonna talk about it, but it's uh, they can be fertility charms as well. So we'll go with the good luck, I think in this case. And, uh, and they're just nice decorations for your outside bars. I mean, there's whole uh, tiki clubs and things like that that you, can, uh, that you can join online, social media and those sorts of things. But I think some really cool decorations and these tiki masks, you can really make them a little bit of fun. And if you are giving them to someone, maybe put a bit of their character into them as well. So we're just taking the bark off at the moment, just creating that nice platform to be able to carve. And we're using a uh, little Proxon carver. Uh, so it's a little rotary tool basically and it's just carving off that outside bark. We are going to move to um, a, a slightly smoother finish in a minute and that's going to be done with a little rotary rasp. On the same tool, I've just got both of those tools set up ready to go. And we are moving on to that rotary rasp. Now I just made this comfortable for myself. You can see where I'm positioned and where the piece of timber's positioned there. In a minute, we're turning it round to have the other side facing us. This is now the point where all the bark is, is gone. We've got a nice clean finish. So we take off the, the face plate, turn them over and get the design drawn on. You can just see there I was using the um, uh, the, the clamp, so a set of dogs, one in the vise and one um, with a piece of timber behind it on the back of the uh, the bench, just, just to give me a nice firm platform. Using the same carver here, I'm just carving out or hogging out material from the center. I want to make like a little boat really, um, so probably around about three quarters of an inch, about 20 mil in thickness, so thinner if you can. Obviously we want to avoid going through, but this is the, the, the labor intensive bit, this is the time um, the bit of the time consuming bit. Um, you could just chisel out if you wanted to and then obviously back in the day that's what they were. They were um, just a little throw was used just to take out that centre. But yeah, I'm just hogging this material out, um, getting the job done nice and quickly. Um, you need to prepare yourself if you're going to do this because there are shavings flying everywhere. So I've got a full face visor on, fresh air being pumped down in front of my face um, and just to make sure I'm safe. And it will you also um, this is a fairly small cutter, but you might decide, especially if you go for a bigger cutter, that you want to wear gauntlets and gloves because those shavings do come off at a fair rate and they, they can um, they can hurt if, they, uh, if you're using a big cutter and it's a dry timber, for instance. And sort of getting to the latter stages here. Just being a little bit careful. You can see the bench dog on the vise um, in the fore, for, uh, the fore there. Um, so just be a little bit careful of that. The back one's okay because it's a piece of timber that's holding, that's being held uh, by a clamp, so we're okay if we get a little bit of touch there. There we are, there's a, a look at what it looks like when all that material is taken out. Now the design, now you can see there I've just downloaded a a free tiki mask design, but if you want to, you can design your own. And from there, once you've done the first one, you've got the nose and mouth and the eyes, you can pretty much make whatever pattern you want um, and keep it random. This is 
really, really roughly drawn on. It does not matter. Just have a look on uh, at Tiki Mass Designs and you'll see they can take on any form. They can be basic, they can be really, really intricate. It's entirely up to you. It also consideration whether you're gonna keep the piece plain in terms of color or whether you're gonna paint it and put color on. So that will also have an impact in the design that you're gonna, gonna use. We are gonna pierce a few pieces like the eyes and the mouth as well. So they'll come out. So um, think about framing those. Um, you can see at the moment we're just doing the, the forehead and we're just doing a nice design on the top just to uh, mimic um, headdress. And then of course that big gaping mouth which is really important with the showing of the teeth. Okay, so here we go, look. We're just gonna, because we're gonna pierce, so I'm gonna use a, a really fine blade in a, a jigsaw. So before I do that, I wanna create a hole, a little bit like using a scroll saw. You need to create that space for the blade to go into. Um, so just putting holes in both the eyes and in the mouth. Now, just in case you were wondering how we managed to keep our dust masks and things um, to ourselves, um, we labelled everything just like when we went to school. So you can see my name on the top of my mask every now and again. Now, you, what you might have noticed also there, that, that little clamp that I'm using slipped. Um, that's an actual screw in the back of the, um, a bit of sacrificial timber and a screw in the back of the mask. Now that slipped out, so off camera I just went away and corrected that. Now nice and stable again, I'm using my little cordless jigsaw little tiny fine blade just to get in there almost like a scroll saw really just to take out those those bits that we want to get rid of stuck in there for the minute but um just a little break away and that'll that'll come out the last the last section just tidying up making sure those crisp corners are crisp getting any getting rid of any last minute little bits going to a line so now the interesting bit I'm going to use the same carver first of all to draw a line around all the detail so it's sort of like a little defining line we can then gently um, take bulk away from there. So I want to have some of the features um, where they're pronounced and other pieces where we've actually taken timber away. So you can see around the nose, for instance, the teeth need to be sunk in. So all that sort of stuff. So just cutting around the detail, cutting around my lines um, before just working on the, the bits that need to be taken away. This is quite a small scale. So back um, a few years ago, we've got, um, uh, I used a similar tool, but this time an Arbitex, so a bigger blade, a four inch blade. And we were doing much bigger ones, three foot long, um, by around about sort of six inches in, um, in diameter. And I say diameter, these are cut in half, so these are true masks. But if you've got actual rounds, you can keep them and put them as, um, as columns in the garden if you want to. So you can cut all the way around there, almost like a totem like a totem pole, that sort of thing. So there's, it's, it just does free up several options for you. Um, loads and loads of design options as well and design ideas. Don't have to stick to the sort of Polynesian tiki mask. You could go full North American Indian and things like that. So loads of options. There we are, just taking away, just relieving, relieving some of the, the, the material around the cheeks. thinking about decorating and painting all the time if I'm going to where I can add color making sure I've got lines to paint up to and all those sorts of things there will become a there will come a time where even this small um, carving cutter will be too big so I'll have to move on then to the little rotary tools and we've got that coming up in a minute some little rotary rasps just to just to work on the, the detail And don't worry about any woolly fibers, any any sort of 
something sticking up that will be burnt off and all of the mass I've made so far I've burnt the surface for that reason you can then wire brush away any of the, the, the excess charring um, but uh, it, it means that you don't have to worry about sanding or anything like that there we are, having a bit of a think what to do next Almost getting to the point where we want to start working on a little bit more finer detail. There we are. So look, we've gone to a little rotary tool now. So this is uh, a coarse burr and it's just filling in the lines really. Crisping everything up, getting into those spots that that, uh, that big carving head couldn't get into. We'll be doing a little bit of dentistry in a minute. It's quite important tidying up the inside of all these holes. So the eyes, the mouth, making sure it's all neat and tidy. Because if you remember, we would have come away from the from the jigsaw with a fairly rough cut. Sort of started coming to life now. You can see the character, you can see the you know exactly what it's supposed to be. little bit of a, a carving now this is a, um, a pneumatic carving tool so I've used the same rotary um, rotary unit but I've just added carving head instead just to get those straight lines Back to the rotary tip, I think. Maybe not. More carving. There we are, all finished. Now for the burning. This is the exciting bit. This is a bit of fun. You can play with fire. Um, and look at those bits of detail come out. This is taking off those little fine fibers, those little hairs. And because we're going to wire brush this off anyway in a minute to get rid of some of the, the most extreme charring, just so it, it doesn't come off all over our clothes. So here we are. Getting right inside the, the holes of the eyes and the mouth as well. I love to see these flames. Now, obviously, we're outside the workshop. I wouldn't do this in the workshop with all those bits of those piles of shavings and things in there. This is outside. So those flames can come up. Don't worry, if it does catch on fire a little bit, put it put it out, have a little spray bottle of water. Um, we're gonna brush it off anyway. So now we can start thinking about the brushing. So we're going to use a wire brush 
just to take off the worst. And this gives a really cool effect. So you get a really nice look to the piece once you finish the wire brushing. See that brown comes through. I just want to get rid of like, the real heavy charring, like I said, so it doesn't come off everywhere. We're going to seal this in with a, a finishing oil. You could put a varnish on top of this, but I always think with varnishes there, over time they will start to flake and peel. With finishing oil, just let the weathers get to it. This also gives a good um, base for your uh, painting. If you are going to paint, paint before you put any oil on. You don't want oil on the surface before you paint. Brushing his teeth. I suppose if I needed to critique my, my, my own work there, I would have, I should have burnt the, the top and the bottom and the inside as well, so it's all one uniform colour. But you can see now, they're just starting to get, with that burning, they're starting to get that weathered effect. So all the fibres are gone and we're just really rounding over all of those sharp edges. Looking really cool. I love that. A little bit of oil on there. Look how the colour comes out now. Now this will, this is obviously, good, when it first goes on, it's going to be a bit dark. It will uh, sort of lighten up as it starts to dry. It's like if you put liquid on any surface, um, as it starts to dry, it'll, it'll go a little bit paler. Remember, if you're going to paint, don't oil first. This is only to leave as um, as this colour. Um, if I want to paint it, I'll, I'll do that first before oil. Almost there. This oil is going to take... Probably want to leave it a good 24 hours, to be honest, just to fully cure. Yeah, it'll be touch dry within about, I would say within about an hour, but to let it properly cure about, about 24 hours um, before it gets any real hard weather. There we go. Almost there. I love the way those colours come through once you start putting the oil on. What a great project. Good fun project. You can do that uh, with the kids if they're interested in doing this sort of thing. You can hand carve it or you can use your rotary pieces that I've been using. It's entirely up to you. But they're great fun. Great gifts as well. Well, there we are, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that one. That was a really good fun session for me. I know where these are going to go in my garden. So whatever you're doing this summer or in your gardens, have fun with your friends and enjoy. Don't forget, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share with as many friends as you have. Thanks again and bye-bye.